Well, we're here at the end of the day, um, and we've had a session um, all about different ways of um, creating monuments in our time and preserving um, the cultures of history, but also creating and manifesting the important issues and um, moments and experiences um, that we're sharing at the moment. And this, right now, we're going to be talking to a filmmaker. Matthew Heinemann, um, who has made one of the most extraordinary films, I think, of the past um, two years, a, um, a project that has explored the first wave of the coronavirus pandemic um, here in New York that follows um, the frontline workers at a hospital in Queens. And um, we're going to be having a discussion about how film and culture and community come together um, to create another kind of monument. Um, so we're going to cut to um, the trailer and then Matthew and I are going to have a short conversation. to keep it together. I have kids who can't see me fall apart. He has to come home. He has no choice. And just let my fear be my strength, because I know one day I'm going to be with my wife and my baby. It is because of you that we are going to make it through. You are more than just a doctor. You do it from the heart. Every time you see the COVID patient, you can't help but say, damn, this can easily be my mom. Each one is getting harder and harder. It's tough to see people constantly have to suffer. When we started chanting, I literally felt like my breath was stripped away. I also heard all the times my patients said, I can't breathe. Guys, we need some help in here now. Wait, stop. I have a pulse. Uh, I have a pulse right here. Pulse, pulse, pulse. What we've been doing here over the last number of weeks is extraordinary and special. And you are fearful, you are stressed, but you raise the bar each and every day that you get up and come to work. We weren't made for this, but I think this made us. I'm tired of seeing people like you in the hospital. Your family cares about you. You got people who care about you. So, um, Matthew, I want to go back um, to the beginning of the pandemic, March 2020. Um, you had, you were a documentary filmmaker and you were living in New York, um, and you start to investigate this idea of pursuing a documentary about the pandemic itself at the beginning of the pandemic. Can you set the scene for us a little bit? Like, what was, for those people that weren't here um, in New York at the time, like, what was it, what was it like? Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, it was terrifying. I mean, you know, we, had, we knew so little about, obviously, the, the science of, of COVID, of, of how it was transmitted. It felt like this ex sort of apocalyptic movie. The, the streets were empty, the, you know, being punctuated by almost minute-to-minute -minute sirens, and, um, which I don't think any New Yorker will ever forget. And I think as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, as a journalist, whatever I am, um, I felt this enormous obligation to try to capture this moment, to try to put a human face to it. We were so inundated with stats and misinformation and headlines, but we weren't like viscerally connecting to it. And I think honestly, that's one of the greatest tragedies of COVID is that um, you know, the general public didn't see what was happening. And I, you know, there's a reason journalism exists. There's a reason why war correspondents go to war zones. Those images 
um, inform public opinion. They inform public discourse. And I think that's part of what allowed this very partisan rhetoric to fester and to, to grow. And that's another reason why I felt this just enormous obligation to try to get inside there and show what was really happening without the politics, without the stats, but showing what was happening to individual doctors, nurses, and patients. And in the actual hospitals themselves, you were there with your crews, you didn't know how the virus spread, you didn't know if you were actively um, going to contribute in a way. I mean, wh how did you deal with those tensions, those realities of, the, of filming on the front line? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was absolutely terrifying. Um, having filmed in a bunch of conflict zones uh, on various projects and various films over the years, you know, you can sort of come back to New York where I live and um, turn off your brain. Whereas this, you know, we were living the same thing we were documenting. Um, it was a sort of 24-7 full-on experience for not just weeks, but months. Um, and obviously, you know, there's a lot of trauma and, and death and other stuff that we witness on a daily basis. Um, but I think the overarching feeling, and I, and I can speak on behalf of my amazing crew, is um, there was also so much love and fortitude and courage that we witnessed um, every single hour. And I think that's what pushed us to keep making this film is, is you know, I think if, if I was gonna distill it down to one thing, it's about how human beings come together in the face of crisis. And, and that was a really beautiful thing to witness. I mean, the, um, I 100% I agree. And I think that the, the, the human face that you're describing, um, the, the feeling of having having a face to this crisis, which was the frontline workers. And one of the, the themes, again, of this session that we're speaking um, in and actually closing the show um, is about, the, about making those invisible forces that, that shape our lives and those sort of um, less visible communities that make the city run. Right? And I think in New York it became so clear at that time, like who makes the city run, like who gets to stop working and who doesn't get to stop working. Um, and you're you witnessing that and broadcasting that and sharing that um, has I think has like such an agency and such an important agency. Yeah, you know I think the two patients that we followed one was a New York City cop, one was a nurse. You know they are representative of all the you know essential workers, the frontline workers that were most likely to get sick. Um, you know. It became very clear also within the first couple of weeks that this virus was you know, very clearly disproportionately impacting people of color. You don't need to be a scientist or an epidemiologist. You just need to walk through the ICUs and observe that. And you know, the film also became a sort of exploration of, of that as well, um, and especially um, in following our principal doctor, Dr. J, who's a first generation American from, from Haiti who, you know, after George Floyd was killed, joined the protests in these, what previously were completely empty streets, now filled with thousands and thousands of people um, speaking out against systemic racism, which is also obviously intricately tied to uh, that disproportionate impact of, of the virus. Um, these all just became themes that we explored naturally over the course of this sort of four month document in time. And I, I totally agree that, that that was the moment that the health crisis became a civic crisis and it became a social crisis. And um, that part of, I think, what's interesting to us about this um, film, as well as being, um, you know, how important it is to bear witness to these events and to, um, to archive them, but also I'm interested to know what you think about this idea of making a monument and documentary filmmaking as... Um, as a way of preserving, as a different type of preservation. Um, do you think about that, and how, do you, how would you imagine this film kind of contributing to the history of, um, of the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I think probably more so than any film I've ever made, I felt this just self, probably self-imposed, but this enormous weight on my shoulders that um, we're documenting this once-in-a-lifetime event. And I also knew that, you know, 
it was so difficult to get access inside hospitals. Um, and I only was able to get do it, you know, through a connection in a previous film that I made about healthcare. And so I knew that, you know, no one really had the access that we had. And so that I felt even more weight on my shoulders to, to document this moment. Um, and yeah, and, and I was aware that this, whether, I don't know if it was gonna be, you know, what, what type of film it would be, how, what the reception would be, but I knew on some basic level that it would be, you know, a historical testament to these four months. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was very much something that I was conscientious of uh, throughout the making of it. I mean, every single person on earth has been touched by COVID in some way. And I hope the film provides a vehicle through which we can reflect on all that we've been through. Um, how have we changed? How have we changed as a society? How have we changed as individuals? Um, how can we apply that to the present? And how can we apply that to the future? Um, that's one of the many things that I hope people uh, sort of explore and feel as, as they're watching the film. And Matthew, you're a, you're a filmmaker, as you said, you're not sure if you're a journalist or a documentary filmmaker. I, I think that ultimately you're a storyteller and um, much of what we try to, to do with our conference and our project is also about um, telling, finding ways to tell the most important stories of like current affairs, but through culture and through art practice. And I'd love to know just to finish, like what um, what motivates you to be a storyteller, and what what um, what do you get out of it as well as a professional? I I don't know. I mean, I think I feel extraordinarily lucky to do what I do. Um, what a privilege every year or two to dive into another world and explore it. And um, I think if there's one through line through my work, it's it's sort of what you just said. It's trying to take these massive amorphous subjects um, that we read about every day in the paper and we talk about at dinner at bars or whatever but we it's hard to viscerally connect to these things often whether it's the you know drug war in Mexico or it's ISIS in Syria or the Afghan war I just I was there um, in the final months um, or in, in this case, in, in, with COVID, you know, trying to take these, these massive things and, and trying to make you feel, you know, I think every single day in the edit room, every single day in the field, I constantly say, let's, let's let the audience get inside the shoes of, of a doctor as they're running down the hallway when someone's coding. Um, let's let them feel what those empty streets felt like. Let's, let, let's put them in those places and, and let them emotionally connect. Because I think that's the only, you know, that empathetic connection is what allows us to really think and care and feel. Um, and then hopefully generates conversation around these, these issues in a way that, you know, you didn't feel necessarily connected before. Well, I think that's a beautiful way to end. And thank you and congratulations on such an extraordinary film and project. Um, and thank you for sharing your time with us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you.